Last time, we used Entity Framework to connect our Vertical Slice Architecture application to a database. However, we ran into some quirks with fitting Entity Framework into the Vertical Slice Architecture paradigm. So this time, instead of using Entity Framework, let's use the Dapper micro RRM to connect our application to a database. And we're gonna see if Dapper has a more pleasant experience with Vertical Slice Architecture. And to have a good comparison between Entity Framework and Dapper, we're gonna implement the same functionality in Dapper that we implemented in Entity Framework. And that functionality is auditing secret message views to a database table whenever the user views the secret message. And just wanna clarify before we get started that we're not gonna see an overall comparison between Entity Framework and Dapper. We're only talking in the context of vertical slice architecture because no matter what, Entity Framework and Dapper are both great in their own ways. So starting off, we're gonna branch off from the commit from before we implemented Entity Framework so that the Entity Framework implementation that we did last time isn't in our way. So let's do a git log and copy the commit hash from before we implemented Entity Framework. And let's check out that branch again from before we implemented Entity Framework. So we'll do a git checkout dash b to create a new branch. We'll name this branch VSA dash dapper and paste the commit hash that we wanna create this branch from. And now we have a branch that's ready for our Dapper implementation without any of the framework in the way. So in order to use Dapper, we have to install the Dapper NuGet package, of course. So let's go to our project and manage NuGet packages. And all we need is Dapper. So let's search for Dapper and install the latest version. We also want to connect to a SQLite database ultimately. So we'll also need Microsoft.data.sqlite. Let's install that, just the latest version. And now that we have our packages, we're ready to use Dapper. And obviously the first thing we need to do is connect to our database. So that being said, we're gonna create a factory class that'll create connections to our SQLite database. And this connection factory class can just go in the shared layer. And the reason it can go into the shared layer is because it's not related to our domain at all. It's application agnostic. We could easily apply it to another application and conveniently, the shared layer is the lowest layer in our vertical slice architecture application. So all the layers above it can leverage our connection factory in order to open connections to our database. So in our shared folder, let's add another folder for database. And in this folder, we'll add a class to create our SQLite database connection. We'll call this the SQLite DB connection factory. And all this class is gonna do is create our SQLite database connection, of course. So we're gonna have a method that returns that DB connection. We'll call it connect. And all it's gonna do is instantiate a SQLite connection. And to create this connection, we're gonna have to pass in a connection string to our SQLite database. So we're gonna get that injected through the constructor. Let's define a field for our connection string. And again, get that injected through the constructor and then pass it to our SQLite connection that we instantiate. And let's import everything we need. So system.data for the IDB connection and Microsoft.data.sqlite for the SQLite connection. And the reason we're gonna inject the connection string through the constructor rather than passing it as a parameter to the connect function is so that any client that has to use this connection factory won't have to know about the connection string or have to pass it in. Instead, the connection string is already gonna be injected into the object. So now that we can connect to our database, the next thing we have to do is initialize all the database tables that our application uses when our application starts. And currently that's only gonna be one table, the viewed secret messages table for our auditing data. So we're gonna create a database initializer class that handles our database initialization. And that's gonna live in the application layer. And the reason we're putting it in the application layer is because it deals with our application startup and because it's gonna initialize all the database tables that our underlying layers rely on. So in our application layer, in that folder, let's add another folder for database. And let's create a class to initialize our SQLite database. We'll call this the SQLite DB initializer. So this SQLite DB initializer, of course, is going to initialize our SQLite database. So let's add a method to initialize that database. And to initialize the database, we're gonna to have to connect to our SQLite database. So let's get our SQLite DB connection factory that we just created injected through the constructor. So let's take that connection factory 
and get our database connection. And via that database connection, we're gonna execute some SQL. So this SQL is going to scaffold out our viewed seeker messages table. So let's throw that into a constant, a const string. We'll call this the create viewed seeker messages table SQL. And we're gonna create the table if it doesn't already exist, of course. And we'll call it viewed secret messages. And the fields that we have on this table are gonna be the same fields that we used when we implemented Entity Framework previously. So we're gonna have an ID field, which will be the primary key of the viewed secret message. We're gonna have the ID of the user who viewed the secret message. We're gonna have the content of the secret message at the time it was viewed and the date viewed. So when the user actually viewed the secret message. So let's take that SQL statement and execute it against our database connection. And let's import everything we need. So the database connection factory from our shared layer and execute async, which is an extension of Dapper. So let's import Dapper. Now that we have our database initializer, we're gonna have to call it from somewhere. So conveniently, we can use our existing application initializer that we implemented in the past and runs when our application starts. And obviously that already deals with initialization concerns. So we can call our database initializer from that class. So let's go over to our application initializer and let's get our SQLite DB initializer injected through the constructor here. And then when we go to initialize the application, let's simply take our DB initializer and initialize the database. And let's import our SQLite DB initializer from the database slice. So now our application initializer references our database initializer. And in our application, we resolve the application initializer from dependency injection. So that means we're gonna have to register the database initializer in dependency injection so that we can successfully resolve it from the application initializer. So let's go into our application dependency injection slice and add new extension methods for our database functionality. So let's just start off by copying one of these existing extension method classes and we'll rename this to add dapper database extensions. So let's rename this extension method class to add dapper database extensions and rename our extension method to add dapper database. So in order to register the functionality to connect to our dapper database, we're first gonna take our host builder, of course, and we wanna configure services and the overload we want to use here is the one where we get the host builder context as well as the service collection that we want to register dependencies with. And we'll see why we also want this host builder context in just a second. So the first thing we want to register is the SQLite DB connection factory so that we can connect to our database, of course. So we're going to register that as a singleton. We can just have a single instance of this throughout our application all it does is create database connections. And to register this, we're going to instantiate our SQLite DB connection factory here. And we wanna do this here because we have to pass in a connection string. And that connection string is gonna come from the configuration on our host builder context. So let's get a connection string out of that host builder context configuration. And we can use get connection string to do that. We're gonna name our connection string SQLite so we'll add this connection string to our appsettings.json after this. But after extracting that connection string, we can pass it into our SQLite DB connection factory, and that'll be able to connect to our database. And next up, we want to register our SQLite DB initializer so that we can use it when we initialize our application. So let's take our services. And again, we can just add that as a singleton. We can use the same instance throughout our application because all it does is just initialize our database. So with that, let's go through and import everything that we need. So import our SQLite DB connection factory from our shared layer, import our SQLite DB initializer from our database slice in the application layer, and import git connection string from microsoft.extensions.configuration. So now we're expecting to resolve this SQLite connection string from our application configuration which we pass to our connection factory and point our database connection to. But we haven't defined that connection string in our appsettings.json, which gets loaded into our application configuration. So let's move over to our appsettings.json and define that connection string. So in our appsettings.json, let's add a connection strings object for our configuration of connection strings. 
and the connection string that we reference from our application is named SQLite. And we want to point this to a database file named perhaps secret-message.db. So our connection string will be data source equals secret-message.db. And of course, in order to test this, we need to actually call our add dapper database extension method so we can register all of those dapper services in dependency injection and then use them to initialize our database. So in our app.zamba.cs, let's also call add dapper database in order to register the services to connect to our SQLite database. So finally, let's test this out. Our connection string gets loaded from our configuration and we pass that to our SQLite DB connection factory. Our application initializer gets called. So we call initialize on our database initializer and that executes the SQL to create our viewed secret messages table via our SQLite database connection. Our application starts successfully. Our database file was created and looking at our SQLite database, we can see our table was created. So finally, let's write to our database table in our application. So after we load the secret message and display it to the user, we're gonna insert a viewed secret message record into our database table. So in our load secret message command, let's start off by defining the SQL that we'll use to insert a viewed secret message record into our database table. So we'll define that as a constant at the top of our command. So we'll create a string for that. We'll call it the insert viewed secret message SQL. And inside here, we'll start off with our insert statement. So we're gonna insert into the viewed secret messages table that we created. And the columns we're inserting into are the ID column, the user ID column, the content column, and the date viewed column. So these are all the columns in the database table that we created previously. And the values for these columns are gonna be parameters that we pass in via Dapper. So an ID parameter, a user ID parameter, a content parameter, and a date view parameter, and each of these map to their respective columns. So now we just need to execute this SQL against our database. To do that, we're gonna need our SQLite DB connection factory in this command. So let's add a field for that and get that injected through the constructor so that we can use it when we execute this command. So after we load our secret message, let's connect to our database via our DB connection factory, and let's create an anonymous object called parameters that of course is gonna contain all the parameters that we wanna pass to our SQL statement. So it's gonna have an ID property, a user ID property, etc. etc. So let's define those properties on our anonymous object. So our ID property is just going to be a new GUID that we generate and convert to a string. And we want this to be a string because the type of the ID column in our SQLite database is text. The other property we want to pass is the user ID, which we can extract from the user on our current user store. We also want to pass the content of the secret message which we can get from our secret message response. And the date view property, of course, is gonna be right now. So we'll just call UTC now via date time offset. And now that we have our parameters, we can take our database connection and execute some SQL asynchronously, pass in our SQL statement, which is our insert statement that we just defined. And lastly, we pass in our parameters and each of these properties will get mapped to the parameters that we defined in our SQL statement. And let's import execute async from Dapper. Lastly, before testing, we just need to pass our DB connection factory into our command. So in our home view model, let's get our SQLite DB connection factory passed through the constructor, and let's pass that along to the load secret message command. There we go. And we also need the SQLite DB connection factory passed to our load view model factory function so that we can again pass it to our home view model. So let's add that as a parameter here and pass that to our home view model. This constructor is getting very big. Let's move this all to new lines so we can actually see it. And finally, where we register our home view model in dependency injection, we simply need to pass in our SQLite DB connection factory by resolving it from dependency injection. And hooray, let's test this out and write to our database. So we load our secret message and then we connect to our database. So we get our database connection back. We create all of our parameters, which all look good. And then we execute our SQL to insert the viewed secret message into our database table, which 
succeeds. Now back in the SQLite viewer, we can open up our database file again, and we can see we successfully inserted our viewed seeker message via Dapper. So overall, in terms of vertical slice architecture, I feel like this Dapper implementation was much more pleasant than the Entity Framework implementation, mostly because in the Entity Framework implementation, we had to deal with the quirky single DB context implementation that we wanted to share across many slices. So Entity Framework was quite troublesome in terms of vertical slice architecture and resulted in us creating a bunch of confusing abstractions. Maybe there's a cleaner way we could do it, but in terms of Dapper, our dependencies between layers flowed much smoother. We could simply use our connection factory in order to connect to our database, and that lived in our shared layer, the bottommost layer of our vertical slice architecture. So that was easily accessible from the rest of our application. And then each slice could simply write and manage their own SQL in order to interact with the database. And that was much more pleasant than trying to forcibly share a DB context, which we had to do for Entity Framework. But of course, with the DB context in mind, that could be considered a con for Dapper, because of course, now we have to write and manage our own SQL instead of just going through the DB context. And also with Dapper, we don't get the benefit of those automatic Entity Framework migrations that get scaffolded out for us. So in my opinion, I'm probably gonna prefer using Dapper in vertical slice architecture applications in the future. I like its simplicity. I never feel like I'm fighting the framework, which I do feel sometimes with Entity Framework. But hey, we saw Entity Framework works too. The DB context is powerful. So Entity Framework, not a bad choice either. But back to Dapper, just to summarize what we did, we first created a SQLite DB connection factory so that we could connect to our SQLite database that we specify. And then we created a SQLite DB initializer so that we could initialize our SQLite database via Dapper, where we execute some SQL to create the tables that we need. In this case, just the viewed secret messages table. And then we registered all of our database functionality in dependency injection. So the connection factory and the database initializer, which we now call when we initialize our application in the application initializer. And then finally, after we load our secret message, we create a connection to our database and execute some SQL via Dapper to insert a viewed secret message record into our database and passing in the parameters that we need for the record that we want to insert. So if you're interested in Dapper, hopefully you can apply it to your own vertical slice architecture application.